Hello, everybody. Welcome to Quantum Catechesis. I'm Father Joe Krupp, and you are not. And today is on the go with Father Joe. And I've got amazing people here. Uh, my lovely research assistant, uh, Kevin, has uh, journeyed uh, with us, ready and willing to go. And uh, what I'm hoping is that you start submitting your questions right away. Um, we had a lot of good questions from our discussions this week about the second coming, and uh, we'll continue that discussion next week, okay? That on Wednesday, we will absolutely start going after your questions about the second coming. But in the meantime today, let's submit those so that we can get after it. Uh, I am here at Lansing Brewing Company in Lansing, Michigan, where uh, they are re-releasing Joe in Black. Joe in Black is a black ale, and uh, it's, I'm biased, but it's ridiculously tasty. Um, and you can buy them today, starting I think at 1.30. Uh, you can buy them in cans. I think you've got a drive through You can't go in, right? Yeah, you can't come in. I can, because I'm very, very pretty. Uh, and that's the rule. I don't know that that's true, but we'll find out. Yeah, we don't know if it's true. Uh, there's only one way to find out, and that's to wait till you get here. And if they say, you can't come in, then I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, you can't come in. I'm doing something wrong. No, you're no, good. No, I'm not. You're good. I'm doing, I'm good. So thank you for tuning in. Get those questions ready. Write them in the dialogue box and uh, they will be sent to me so that I can do my best to answer them. Uh, now, next week, just as a catch up, uh, next week I'm gonna continue our discussion on the second coming of Jesus and we're gonna look at uh, Christ's second return and what we call the final judgment. There's individual judgment, there's final judgment. We're gonna look at the final one. So uh, we're pretty fired up about this. We're pretty excited. And I got to show God's people something. You may remember that earlier in the week, we have wonderful guests who worked on my rosary. And all my medals are back. All those medals that have fallen off my rosary are now back. So happy, happy, joy, joy. All right. I, uh, so... Uh, here we are, Lansing Brewing Company. This company is owned by uh, a devout Catholic who's a dear friend of mine, and he was foolish enough to have a beer made in my honor. But here's the crazy thing, guys. There's a billboard now out front that displays my savage good looks for all to see. So if you get a chance, we're right across, we're right next to what used to be Lugnut Stadium. I can't remember what it's called now. Does anyone know? Uh, no, uh, but uh, Lansing Brewing Company. Come on out, enjoy a great beer. If you want to buy Joe M. Black Ale, stop by here and pick up a six pack. It'll be a run. Uh, you may remember that uh, earlier when we sold them, we sold them in these huge cans, uh, but now we'll be selling them in standard six pack form. And uh, I don't think we're in any danger of running out this time. You may remember, last time we literally sold out in 40 minutes, which is insane. Uh, but, uh, okay, so uh, what I'm going to ask you to do is submit your questions, and I'm going to get after them, and we're going to have a good old time. But know that I'm so happy you're all here, and I love you guys, and I thank the Lord that we get to do this on Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. So, with that... It looks like we've already got questions. Please keep submitting those and we'll get after it. Our first question is uh, about the movie uh, Fatima. Okay, hold on. Sorry, guys. My, uh, there, my big fat thumbs. I have to fix something on the formatting because somebody hates God and America. And when I say somebody, I mean Carrie. <laughs> okay, I watched Fatima the other day. I loved it. Do you have any insight? Uh, do you have any in, uh, do I have an insight on it? Okay. First, I saw it too, and I absolutely loved it. Uh, the movie is just called Fatima, um, and Fatima is the name of a, uh, town in Spain. It's also, oddly enough, did you know this? That's the name of Mohammed's oldest daughter, Fatima. Um, but I don't know if it's a name for her or not. But either way, 
uh, our Blessed Mother appeared to some children there and spoke an incredible message. And I found the movie absolutely lovely and uplifting, and I cried like an idiot. A very manly, like testosterone fell from my eyes. That's, that's how I cry. Yeah. You know, I don't know if you know this, but Chuck Norris's tears have been scientifically proven to cure cancer, but he's never cried. So it's a problem. Yeah. Did I say Spain? Someone just pointed out Portugal. I always do that. And I know they're not the same. It's Portugal. I said Spain. Everybody knows. Well, Spain. when the Romans had it, it was just España. It wasn't Spain and Portugal. And it was the Iberian Peninsula. Okay, so uh, that's what I have to say about it. I can't say enough. I think we should support it when people make movies that aren't grotesque morally. Uh, and this one is lovely and elevating, okay? Um, so as a real quick update, uh, I will be here. Uh, the beer will be released at 1.30 and I'll be able to stay a few minutes, but I gotta hustle back, wife and kids, you know. And uh, so, uh, there will be come in only. There will actually be no drive through today. Uh, am I reading that right? Yep. So, okay. Uh, we got some more questions already. Uh, now, uh, we have a second coming final judgment question, and I'm going to either wait till the end or keep it till Wednesday. Okay. Uh, depends how many questions we get. Hi from Grand Rapids. You are halfway here. I know. Uh, and uh, I've been to Grand Rapids a bunch, but hello to you from Lansing. I couldn't remember where I am. Okay, Joe. Yeah. Did I say the wrong name? Did I say the wrong name? Yeah. And are you running for the Senate? Oh, Biden, right? Didn't he say he was running for Senate or something? Yeah, yeah. oops. Oh, okay. Is Mary the mother of Flint on the rosary? Not only is she on it, I put her at the cross on my medal because she stood at the cross of Jesus. So thank you for that lovely question. Mary, the mother of Flint here. And then on the other side, I put the medal I got from the Mary Shrine in Champion, Wisconsin, which you all should go to. Um, so yes, Mary, the mother of Flint is on there. Okay, what's the best book for spiritual reading? Okay, um, not too hard to read. That's a good question. Now, when we talk about spiritual reading, I'm not sure exactly what you mean, right? Uh, just to help you out, because I'm gonna give a couple books. Um, there's spiritual reading, which we read to develop our brain, and there's spiritual reading we read to develop our hearts, okay? Uh, if, to me, and I know a lot of you are probably sick of me saying this, okay? Uh, but I can't encourage you strong enough to read the book Mere Christianity, M-E-R-E -E, Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I don't think I can encourage you strongly enough to read that. Um, in terms of taking what is immensely complex and making it totally understandable, you really can't beat Lewis, right? If you read a guy or a gal, whoops, uh, if you read a spiritual writer and you walk away thinking, wow, they're really smart, they've only accomplished half their goal, right? People who, who use huge words and, and it doesn't help us. What Lewis was the master of doing is taking extremely complicated things and putting them in a way you can understand. And so what's kind of funny is there's this category of human that's read a couple books and so when they read Lewis, they're like, oh, it's very simplistic. Uh, and what they tend to mean is they couldn't have wrote it. Okay? Uh, I, I can't say enough about that book, C.S. Lewis. Now, if you're looking for a book to, to uh, I don't know the better way to say it, just grow, not just, but to grow your heart. Okay? If you're like, I don't really necessarily need to grow in uh, knowledge of my faith. I'd like to grow in love of that. You know, uh, I, I don't know. Here's one that's just coming to mind. I'm sitting here praying because I'm not being funny. I've read a million and I loved them all. I, well, that's not true at all. But I'm thinking of all the ones I love. Uh, Spiritual Combat, I think, is a phenomenal book. 
Um, and that's a really good book for holiness. Another one is St. Francis de Sales has a book called, uh, oh my gosh, I only froze up on truly what the church considers, truly one of the greatest works of lay spirituality. Oh my gosh, uh, the something way, the... Oh, no. St. Francis de Sales. Just type his name in Google and they'll have his book. And I can't believe I'm freezing up. This is hysterical. Uh, but I love that. Okay. Uh, I loved the spiritual combat. I loved the book by Francis de Sales, who I just decided to completely forget about. Um, you know, hear me out on this. Okay. Reading. What, what, what did you it's the something way, the something way. Hello, my lady. Introduction, introduction to the devout life. Yes. Holy cow. There it is. Introduction to the devout life. I, I couldn't remember the name of the book because I'm not bright. Uh, oh, my gosh. And a beautiful woman just walked in who might be delivering beer. Hello. Are you bringing beer? A beautiful woman delivering beer. Oh, anyway. It's because we're in the brewery. This is what happens. So anyway, uh, so Devout Life by Francis de Sales, Spiritual Combat by a guy with an Italian last name. I'm gone out of my skull. Um, and anything. Now, this is where you're, you're going to think I'm weird, and I get it. J.R.R. Tolkien series, uh, The Fellowship of the Ring, that whole three-book series, really can inspire you. It is replete with spiritual symbolism, and I, I can't say enough, right? Um, so those are the books that immediately come to mind, but uh, I can't recommend those enough. Um, yeah, all right, great. Okay, so Father, <clears throat> what is your take on the Vatican's engage? Ugh, okay, whoo, ready? All right, what is your take on the Vatican's engagement with the Chinese government and the Catholic Church in China? The Vatican seems to be in a tough spot. Okay, uh, this is one where I struggle a bit. I went to seminary with men from China. And to give you a sense of things, God's people, if you don't know, keep this in mind. Uh, there are more Christian martyrs being made in this day and age than there were in the first 300 years of Christianity, okay? And China and the Middle East are probably the two biggest contributors to the slaughter. Uh, China is doing this to the Muslims in the, I never know whether to say East or West, to the left as you look at China uh, on a map, and they're doing it to the Christians on the other side of the country. So what's the thing with the Vatican? I'm not an expert on it, so I'm gonna talk very generally, okay? Namely, uh, in China, it is illegal to be Roman Catholic. Now, what does that mean? It means the Chinese government, the communists there, uh, created a Chinese Catholic church, which is not in union with Rome. Uh, they appoint the bishops. And uh, so what happens, most Chinese Catholics are members of both. They're members of the secret underground church and the church of uh, the Chinese state government. Pope Francis made an agreement with the state government there. Uh, boy, I'm speaking super, super sweeping generally. Stop killing Christians and we'll let you be a part of appointing bishops, kind of. Uh, uh, I'm not a fan. Um, the cardinal in China uh, is not a fan, but it's what our Holy Father did. Um, and I don't know what to say about that except to ask you to pray, right? We need to pray. Um, we have brothers and sisters, you know, we complain about weather. We complain about if the priest did a good job at mass. These guys are bleeding, dying, being tortured and executed just so they can go to church. And it's a real reminder to us of how blessed we are to live in such a lovely country 
and oh dear God, uh, I think someone's posting politics. I'm, I'm okay, I'm asking you guys, please don't post that garbage on here. I, I, I get that some of you are passionate about it. I just wish we were that passionate about Jesus. Um, I do. If we were my God. Yeah. Anyway, okay, so that's my take. And the Vatican is in a tough spot. They're trying to figure out how to save as many lives as they can and stay loyal to the faith. And, uh, oh, thank you, my lady. You're so kind. Oh, and is this my happy beer? Oh, yay. Okay, thank you. Guys, this is my beer. Woohoo! All right, I'm going to have a sip. Mm, delicious and nutritious, packed full of vitamins and essential nutrients. That may or may not be true. Okay, guys, so there's my beer. It's here, and I, I just had a, a, a drink, and yay. Okay, um, so thank you for that question, and I hope you'll forgive me. Between I don't know enough, and what I know um, is it's hard, okay? It's hard. I, I can't imagine the burden our Holy Father feels. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, sorry I'm a bit late. I didn't know. That's okay. Uh, right? Isn't that cool? You can be late. Um, I have a question that may have already been wrapped. Uh, it's, okay, hey, this is a second coming question. And if you don't mind, I'm going to do one of two things. I'm moving all those to the end of the show because I'm going to talk about it Wednesday. So if we run out of time, don't worry. I'm going to get after this on Wednesday. It's a great question you're asking. Unless, of course, Jesus returns before Wednesday, at which point you really aren't going to need me. Yeah, you'll be like, in fact, we could do it like a quiz. How's this? If we're all in heaven, right, uh, on Wednesday, we'll let's just that. agree to talk about what happened. Yeah. yeah. Over I got to say, I think that's funny. <laughs> I, I, I feel moderately clever on that one. Awesome. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Yes. We'll have a Joe and Black beer. Yes. We'll talk about it. Okay. So, Father, have you been to Our Lady of the Woods in Mayo, Michigan? Oh my gosh, I have. This is so cool. You bring this up. I totally forgot about it. We should do a show there. Yeah. And, and they say that. Whoever said this, thank you. We will, but we're going to wait until the... Yeah, we're going to wait till warm weather again, right? Uh, but I know what you're talking about. And if any of y'all go to Mayo, Michigan, it's really worth seeing. Have you been there? Uh, it's just this beautiful shrine in the middle of the city. And it's a nice, quiet place, uh, unlike my head. <laughs> my head is a loud place. And it's not like anything original or great is happening up there. Mostly like lyrics from 80s hard rock and baseball stats. Okay, uh, no, China is not keeping their part of the agreement. The day after they signed that agreement with Pope Francis, they arrested 5,000 Christians, literally the day after. That's the core of the issue, okay? Um, okay, so uh, what's the best way to send you a request to appear on a podcast? I would recommend bribing me with cookies. I mean, I don't know if you've seen me. I am a fat man. And you don't get this without a commitment to cookies. Uh, I can be bought. I don't really have integrity. I've read about it. <laughs> no. So, uh, no, all kidding aside, I think if you just let uh, Carrie know, um, we've appeared on a couple podcasts. And um, did I tell them about? Oh, no, I'm not supposed to. I almost told them the, the thing. I think it's too early. You think it's too early? I, do, I think it's a little early. Let's well, just say. Listen. You trust your gut. You no, your don't trust my gut. It's filled with french fries now. Yeah. Yeah. And ranch dressing. I watch what goes into it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Hey, if I can do it, I will. What I'll ask you to remember, and I don't want you to pity me. I'm not asking for anything. Just remember, guys, I'm having an awful time keeping up. It's two parishes and a school, and I'm the only priest. Right? There's a retired priest that helps at one of the parishes, the smaller one. Uh, so... I'm, I'm, I am, I'm wiped out. I'll be honest. I am wiped out. My brain is tired. My body's, I'm happy. My little fat heart is happy, but uh, it is hard for me to keep up. So it might take a bit or, um, yeah, anyway. Okay. Um, my Jesus Rosary has a 12 pack ab. Does your Jesus Rosary? Yeah. So you're, I assume you're talking about Jesus being ripped. 
Is that what is that what this is? Yeah, I I don't know if you've seen. There's churches with Schwarzenegger Christs. Have you seen those where he's like, yeah, I died for the sins of the world and I got huge biceps. Uh, you know, it's funny. If this is an actual thing, I don't know. If you look at the Shroud of Turin, um, and if it's accurate, Jesus was of average height for the day, which Isaiah prophesied that there would be nothing special about him to make us look at him. And the thing you need to remember is we are huge compared to people back then. And I mean huge. If you take a look at any of the medieval suits of armor that they have, you can't fit in there. Um, people were much, much smaller. Um, and it's not just that we eat a lot, it's what we eat. Um, and it, it, it makes us big, big people. Make no mistake, if you strolled around in the time of Jesus, you would have been considered a giant. And I don't mean like where people go, gosh, he's tall. I mean, you would be more. I mean, I'm 6'1", okay? So I would be, just a second, what's, five, what's 12 minus 5? Seven. I would be eight inches taller than the average male. You could play center on a basketball team. I could have played center on the basketball team. So uh, people weren't bulky as a general rule. They were slim and wiry, wiry. When you say wiry, you have to say it with a Scottish accent. Wiry, wiry. It's hard to say. Uh, so I don't know what he looked like. I would assume he didn't look like Schwarzenegger. Um, what are you gonna do? Yeah, so my Jesus actually fell off. If you look at, let me get the medals out of the way. Hold on guys. Poop. I lack dexterity. <laughs> All right, so there's my cru crucifix without the corpus, so it's a cross, right? Jesus fell off, and, and I have him, but every time we put him back on there, he fell again. And so Jesus fell like a fifth time. Oh, wow. Yeah, uh, and the last time it was kind of lost. Well, I don't know, it might have been my guardian angel that I found his little corpus, and I thought, I don't want to gamble. So now I carry him around in my bag. <laughs> Uh, but one of your followers said she's four foot ten, so she would have been in. four foot ten. You would have been right in. You would, you would have been right with them. I hope it's not scandalous that I'm drinking a beer while we're talking. Is it? No, that's I'm fine. sipping it. I mean, look, You're I'm, an adult. yeah. Well, and, and somebody said if you can drink at noon, they can drink at noon. Oh so yeah, it's noon somewhere. Is it even noon home. yet? <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Um, what do you recommend? If one falls asleep while praying, this is a big question. I get this a lot and I can't wait to help you, okay? What do you recommend if one falls asleep while praying the rosary or divine mercy? Is it okay to finish even if it's the next day? Okay. Uh, it's natural, normal, and fine with your mama that you fall asleep on her lap. I'm serious. Uh, you don't need to finish it, right? If that helps. Uh, I, I, I think I understand what you're operating out of and my little brain goes the right way. The same way, I mean. But it's one of those where we kind of need to put our brain aside and let our heart grab the reality. Your mama loves to hear your voice. And I'm serious. I know that sounds cheesy, but I actually mean it. So don't worry about falling asleep, praying. I... I yeah, I don't want to get into it. I do this, and I think it's normal, and I think it's part of what Mary wants. Uh, she's the only one of the few people in your life who has no demands on you that are tied to her affection for you, right? Um, so please don't fret, and don't even worry about finishing it, right? Don't even worry about finishing it. If you're a mom, just think, does your child have to, like if your kid fell asleep telling you a story, would you wake him up and say, finish? Carrie would. She told me, yes. Is that true, John? Did she actually punch some of your children because they fell asleep? Well, yes, but we didn't get to that. That was too hard to know. Yeah. We're going to tell you about Goldilocks. See? So, seriously, you be with your mom and let her be with you and don't worry about finishing, because uh, it's not a task. Um, yay, okay. Do you like double stuffed Oreos? I do, but I can't eat them anymore. 
and this is crazy. Are you ready? You know why? I can't stop. I will eat them till I am physically ill. And like, I'll take a couple more and say, this is gonna make me sick. So I have no control with either Doritos or double stuff Oreos. Those are two foods that I can't, I mean, I can, I don't. I guess that's a better way to put it. I choose not to stop. Sure, but that's a price I gladly pay. The question is, doesn't double stuff Oreos make your teeth hurt? Yeah. <laughs> right? Uh, but when Michelangelo, right? Do you know about this? When Michelangelo painted the Sistine Chapel, right? Do you know about this? He was so crippled with arthritis that he literally was laying on his back on a scaffolding and the paintbrush, was, I mean, he was just bent and contorted and would shriek in pain. But he made it, right? He made it. And, you're comparing that and I'm comparing that to my Oreo cookie eating. Okay. <laughs> I will pay that price for beauty. I, you know, if I make it to heaven, that's another guy who's probably going to punch me. Yeah, like, right there's Mike Langell going, I created one of the most beautiful things in the history of art. And you compared that to eating double stuff Oreos. Yeah. And here's the thing, I would try to defend my position. Like I wouldn't be ashamed and be like, oh my gosh, you're right. I'd be like, brah, you never had them. <laughs> they didn't invent them yet. So you take your cute little chapel. Okay. Um, if I, uh, wait. Oh, I get it. Okay, I get it. Sorry, guys. Uh, someone's saying, I saw a Blessed Sacrament medal. Um, if it's not too late, I would love to donate it to the church. For our floor? I bet they mean for our floor. Yeah, uh, I think it's, is it too late? Well, we could double one up. Yeah, if you can, forgive me, okay? I don't know geographically where you are. I don't know uh, any of this. But um, come Holy Spirit. If you get it to us in the next four days, that's, what the Medal. that's when we're going <laughs> to probably be finished by then. Okay? So thank you for your thoughtfulness. Thank you for your, um, I don't know, that's just so lovely to me. It is really. Very, very. Uh, and I hope the fact that I'm saying we got to get it soon if we want to get it in the floor, I hope that doesn't sound ungrateful. I am great. That is so cool. And if you can get it to us, then yeah, we're in. And our business manager will happily reimburse you from his private finance. <laughs> True story. <laughs> okay. Um, what version of the Bible is used for mass? Okay, good question. Um, the Bible, uh, the, so the way the church does it, as she says, there are scriptures, translations we can use at Mass. There's the scripture translation they prefer we use at Mass. And then there's the ones we can never use at Mass. Okay? And what is that based on? As I understand it, it's based on this. <laughs> there's what's called static translation. That's one extreme. And the other extreme would be transliteration. Okay, so let's take first static translations. Church doesn't like those at mass. If you want to use them in prayer, groovy. Church says we shouldn't use them at mass and we shouldn't use them, um, come Holy Spirit. We shouldn't use them at mass and we shouldn't use them at Bible studies. Why? The goal of a static translation of the scripture is to put the scripture in modern terms. So the best example I can think of, this is weird. I saw it with my own eyes, okay? The Good News Bible, which was awful, was a translation <laughs> that would take anything and try to put it into our modern language. And so the, the, what do you call the one where the dude and he's beat up and the Good Samaritan? Remember how it says in scripture, the Good Samaritan took the beat up dude and said, you know, gave him some silver and said, this it said, he gave him a couple bucks. <clears throat> Straight up. He gave him a couple bucks. And I have some issues with that. One, he didn't give him a couple bucks. He gave him a ton of money. And two, I don't even think there were deer in Israel at that point. 
How did he catch him? Was he like, here, Bucks, here? No. What is it? Bow and arrow. No, I think these were alive. Oh, oh. So that's static, okay? The closer the translation is to the idea of static, the more it's trying to make sure they, they'll surrender accuracy for creativity. There we go. I just made that up. Or uh, not creativity, for clarity. They'll, they'll give up accuracy in pursuit of clarity. Now you go to transliteration, which is the exact opposite extreme. And what transliterations do is say, what's the word in Greek? And then they put the word in English. So even the order of the words is different, okay? <clears throat> even the order of the words is different. So uh, we would say in English, I'm going to the store. In Greek, they would say store, going, no, verb is last. Store, me, heading to. Right, that would be a transliteration. What's the one we go for? In the church, we go with, ready? N-R-S-V, New Revised Standard Version. And it's very accurate. And at times you may have noticed, as we switched to it in 2011, you may have noticed even so accurate that sometimes it's a bit cold. Because what we can't do in English that they could in Greek is swap out words for clarity. And again, I know I use this all the time, but it's the best one. We have the word love, and love can mean anything, right? Like, I get creeped out. This whole love is love. I'm like, that's creepy. <laughs> really. Because think of what you can do with that word love. Uh, ugh, that's freaky to me. <laughs> but, And I know they don't mean it, right? Uh, we, okay, side issue. So... Uh, the word love in our language could mean like I love this beer, right? My dad's here. I love my dad. My friends are here. I love my friends. Those are all different types of love. In Greek, there's a word for each kind. So that's why the translation that you hear at church sometimes might sound a little cold, okay? Just because English doesn't have the diversity of words that Greek does. Okay. That was a long answer. Are you interested in this at all? I can't tell. They're Are people happy? Yeah. Okay. All right. Whoops. Um, that you got mentioned on Clerically Speaking again today. They talked about, is that Father Harrison? I think so. I love him. I think it's Father Harrison and another priest. And I think it's the other priest that doesn't like me very much. He blocked me on Twitter like 10 times. <laughs> Uh, so I don't know, uh, but thank you. That's so lovely to say. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, do, 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 do. Is there an English translation for the catechism? Oh crap, I see what you mean. Okay, so you're talking about how in the catechism, I talked to you about how it was written in a way that's hard to understand. Is there one that's easier to understand? Try you cat. Okay? I don't even know if this still exists. I know uh, you like uh, oh, like me. Y O U C A T. Okay. Now, to be clear, this has nothing to do with felines. Cats are straight from hell. I don't know if you guys know that. Uh, cats came after the fall, and they're pure evil. But so you cat, I think, is uh, if it's still out there. Some years ago, we used it at Lansing Catholic, and our kids said it was great. Er I don't know. High school kids don't get fired up about religion class. But they said it was helpful. How's that? UCAT. Uh, and I think it actually came out of Germany. Um, so, all right. Oh, if a non-believer asks the greatest historical evidence of Jesus, what would you say? Well, I'd throw out two things without thinking at least. Okay? Here's two. Uh, one would be Roman records. Okay? Romans wrote everything down. And shortly after the time of Jesus, that he lived, died, and rose, and went up to heaven and said, I eat done. Uh, there was a guy named Josephus, and he has a crazy story. Uh, he's a bad guy, I think, in a lot of ways. He was a Jewish general who sided with the Jews in the war against Rome. And then when it was clear they were losing, he switched sides and gave up his army. A lot of people died when he turned traitor. Okay. 
But the Romans kind of dug him uh, because he was a good general. Uh, and um, what did he end up? Oh, he ended up writing a history, and he mentions Jesus in there. Uh, he spells his name again in the Hebrew fashion, Yeshua, right? When you say Jesus, no one called him Jesus, right? They didn't speak Latin in that part of the world. They spoke Hebrew and Greek, primarily Greek. But they would have called Jesus Yeshua. That's how you say his name. Uh, we say Jesus because we got this through the Latin, right? Uh, does this matter? I don't know why yes. I'm going here. So he uses the other uh, pronunciation. He says Yeshua. Um, and uh, what's another proof? I think the clearest thing would be the disciples themselves, that the Romans recorded uh, a few of their executions, and there was some talk about them. And here's the key. Not one of those disciples recanted their testimony even while they were being ripped to pieces. Okay? The, to me, those are the two biggest pieces. There's no logical reason for Christianity to have survived. It wasn't an easy religion. It wasn't a religion anybody wanted to be a part of at the beginning. And the people who were its founders, when they told the story, um, my gosh, they looked like idiots. Right? I think I've gone through this before, haven't I? Yeah? Oh, is he bringing more beer? There's more beer coming. If I get emotional, I need you to look away. <laughs> I don't want you to see me cry. Okay, I cannot get to the brewery. That's because of sin. Uh, totally care. I don't know. I can't get to the brewery. Can we buy your beer anywhere else? Um, oh, 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 John. Why we're here. This is why we are here. Let me turn the little cans toward the front. Okay. Ah, this, is, uh, this is if when you come here today to buy the beer that Jesus personally chooses as his favorite, this is what it looks like. And also, speaking of six-pack, I, I don't know, have we talked about my, my, my abs? Yeah, because I do have a six-pack. It's just like under layers and layers of fat. I want to protect right it. there. Yeah, this is my six-pack. Okay, so what were we talking about? Oh, can you get this beer anywhere else? I don't think so. I'm sorry. Uh, you can, oh, you can get in a, oh yeah, that's right, Grand Blank, right, where I'm serving right now, some of the local bars have it. So you need to come to Lansing or into the southern part of Flint to uh, buy it. Can they ship? No. I'm sorry, the state of Michigan forbids these guys from shipping beer. Uh, so, um, darn. Okay. I put on my glasses upside down. Okay, how did you do examination of conscience during night prayer? You know, I go with the real simple thing, okay? Ask yourselves three questions, okay? Where have I failed to love God? Where did I fail to love God today? Where did I fail to love others today? And where did I fail to love myself today? And when we talk about loving ourselves, that might sound funny. I'm taking off my hat. It's getting hot. Are you hot? No. Uh, when, I talk, when we talk about loving ourselves, we're not talking about um, self-obsession. Uh, but we are talking about recognizing what a treasure you are in God's eyes. That, as I always say, you were appraised by God. And he said you were worth all his blood and all his breath. Did you treat yourself with the dignity? Like as much as I joke about my eating, it's a big part of my examination of conscience. I don't eat in a way that reflects my conviction that I'm a, that my body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, right? And that doesn't mean, you know, no treats, no sugary happiness, no. But for me right now, what I recognize is my eating habits are totally unhealthy. And I got to get after that, right? So that's an idea of self-love, okay? Uh, in terms of loving others, uh, that's, a, that's in our culture right now. I, I really think it's something we're, we're, we're losing. We're losing this battle. Um, and we need to reclaim it. That again, I know I say this, but I, I actually see some of these sites that are contemptuous of the idea of niceness or kindness, right? This whole, like there, there are people who actually use the phrase church of nice in a derogatory fashion. And all that is is unhealed anger. I'm sorry. 
You can pretend that that anger is somehow holy because you think it's connected to your righteousness, but man, oh man, right? And I get that all the time. Well, Jesus flipped over tables. Yeah, he also washed people's feet who, who were going to run away from him. He also healed. He also gave totally of himself to us. And if you're only picking the table flipping because that's convenient for your anger, you're missing the boat, right? Missing the boat. And what was Jesus mad at when he was flipping table? People using the temple of God as a place to make money, which a lot of these people who want you to be angry are after. They're trying to make money by keeping you angry, keeping you afraid. And so I always think it's ironic. Um, and it violates the commandment, right? Don't use God's name in vain. It's not just about swearing. It's about not using religion or God or faith as a means to justify or as something we can exploit. Yeah, yeah, okay. I got all serious. Um, okay, now I'm gonna go back to the top. Uh, one could say that you are doing this from a brewer brewery as a commentary on Hebrews. I like this. <laughs> the brewer here is male. He brews. I like this. Whoever you are, I award you 18 Jesus points. 18 Jesus points. I, I do think we should applaud every time. Oh, yes. Uh, can we applaud? And I want to be clear. My brother John's even did a snow, slow clap. That's, yeah. All right. Is Mary the mother? Oh, I already answered that one. Oh, you did. Uh-huh. Uh, you talked about fortune telling. Did I lose you guys? No. Nope. The phone, a call came in, which is weird because this isn't connected. <laughs> That's so funny. Every once in a while. I'm telling you. Did you guys hear the question? I it's can't tell. Like yeah, but I don't know if they heard it because the phone got all whatever. We did. Hmm? Your phone had paranormal activity. Nice. <laughs> you know, this one, I'm not sure what to say, except I'm going to be candid. And I want to be clear that this is my opinion without a ton of thinking and praying about it, okay? It does seem to me that sticking our nose in the spiritual realm without being summoned there by God is always a bad idea, okay? Oh, so people are saying no. The question was, is it okay for a Catholic to get involved with paranormal investigations? I don't know. Uh, y y I, I'm really tempted to say no. I'm going to give you the safest possible answer. Uh, that I don't think it's a good idea. And, and again, here's why. The difference between Christianity and magic is that in magic, we do different machinations or different things. And we initiate contact with the spirit world. In Christianity... God summons and we respond. And you might think that's not a big difference. Oh, it is. It's walking into someone's house, spiritually, right? It's walking into someone's house. Think of it that way, okay? Uh, imagine going in, not to be silly, okay? But here's what's coming to me, okay? When you walk, you walk into a building and what you know is there's two people in there. One who loves you, who didn't invite you, and one who hates you, who would like you there very much, <laughs> right? That's what happens when you and I enter into the spiritual world without God's invitation. I think that's helpful. I hope that's helpful. Okay. Um, with Halloween being on Saturday, can we wear our costumes to mass? No. <laughs> I will be wearing a lovely dress. Uh, I will. Uh, white with some green because that's Jesus' favorite school. Uh, but, yeah, I, I would not recommend it. I remember one year at our church when I was younger, they had an All Saints party, so it was come to Mass dressed as a saint. And one of us, I won't say who, put on a robe, right, like, like they would have worn in Jesus' time, and then took masking tape, the brown kind, and rolled it into different size balls and stuck it. And they were playing the part of Stephen who was stoned to death. And <laughs> I don't know what to tell you, except it probably was really sinful, but that God found it hilarious. 
I don't know. You know, Stephen's in heaven, and who knows? He might have found it funny, and he might have been like, it's kind of a bad memory, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Got him to heaven. Okay. So I, 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 I would avoid it. I would avoid it. I would avoid it. Um, okay. There is two spiritual combat books. Oy vey. Okay, an Italian last name. Does that help? Yeah, it's it's an Italian name. How's that? And uh, it's a f fine book, a fine book. Okay, so we covered those. Um, what's the best answer to someone who says that nowhere in the Bible does it say? See, I'll stop right there. Right, we're Catholic. So when people ask us, well, it doesn't say this in the Bible. No, there wasn't a Bible for 500 years of Christianity. That's not a key consideration for us, right? For us, we say that the Bible is the child and the church is the parent. For our Protestant brothers and sisters, they tend to flip that equation and they would say the Bible is the parent and the church is the child, right? So when I talk to my Protestant friends, that's often the thing we, we joke about is uh, they'll say, well, the Bible doesn't say that. And I'll be like, mm-hmm, and I'm totally cool with that, okay? But be this as it may, I'll finish it. Um, what's the best answer? You're, you're ah, the same whoops, sorry. I'm sorry. You're saying this. Okay, I'll finish this. Okay, and then we'll figure out what's going on. Uh, what's, someone told me there's nowhere in the Bible does it say he needs to go to a building to keep the Sabbath holy. This person has left the church over the priest scandals, and this is his suggestion. This was his retort. Okay, so... You know, it's human nature. That, that's the key thing for us, okay? That as long as I'm out on my own, I can justify any sin, right? Just give me a long enough timeline and I can baptize any opinion I have. The community keeps us from self-deception, okay? The community keeps us from self-deception. Not only that, the community refines our love, right? So if you've been at Mass and you've been with someone who, like, have you been there with Screaming Kid, right? And I'm up front. I get to see all your faces, right? And we're, we're talking Catholics here. So usually it's a blank look, yeah? The Frozen Chosen. Do you find that funny? Yeah. I think it's funny. Okay, so usually I see the blank stares, uh, but all kidding. Uh, oh, I get it. Okay. Uh, I, I see the pff, community prayer is hard. Self-prayer, easy, right? Hard is, is good in this situation. I need to learn to change and to grow in that internal discipline that says, I don't need you to be perfect to pray because Jesus doesn't need me to be perfect to pray. And when we can sit there with screaming child, with a person who drives us nuts, with a person we radically disagree with their politics, but we can all sit there and say, whatever divides us, here's what unites us. We believe God loves us and wants us to respond to that love by giving ourselves totally to him. I don't need to agree with you to love you, and you don't need to agree with me to love me. And there is a joy and a power and a blessing to communal prayer. Uh, it does, in fact, say to the Bible, uh, in the Bible, about gathering at Mass. Uh, it, it says that a few times. Uh, and you might want to have your friend check those out. Uh, in terms of uh, someone leaving the church because of how a priest behaves, I kind of get it and I kind of don't. We're all broken. I'm a priest and I'm a train wreck, right? Uh, and if our standard for spiritual leadership is that that person has it all together, we're setting ourselves up to fail. There's only one reason to be Catholic. Only one. Is it true? If it's true, I'm not going to let a wicked person drive me from it. Right? And if it ain't true, walk away. I get it. I'll hug you, tell you I love you. Good luck. Get after it. But when we leave something that's true because people we don't like are there, we've lost something. We've lost something really, really valuable. Okay? And there have been awful bishops, awful priests, awful popes all through history. And there's also been saints at every stage of history. We need saints. We don't need people who say other people need to be saints. Yeah? Okay? God bless you. 
Um, my question is, oh wait, book, okay. Scopoli, Scopoli is the name of the dude who wrote the book, The Spiritual Combat, and I can't recommend it enough. Yeah. I can't, sure. I know you read it. Yeah. I know Lonnie gave it to read. That was where I got that book, and I can't say enough about it. I totally dig it. Um, so, Dom Lorenzo Scopoli. Scopoli, eh? Um, S-C-U-P-O-L-I. Okay. My quick oh, thank you, brother. My question is about, is at bedtime. When I say my prayers, I say a Hail Mary, and then start asking for God to take care of, and protect, and bless my family. And when I do this, I ask for each one individually. I feel it is probably not the proper way, but I don't know any other way. I fall asleep half the time. Is there a better way? I think that's lovely. I don't think really, it's hard to pray wrong, and I'm not being funny, and I know we could joke and find ways to pray wrong, but if your sincere effort and goal and desire is to pray, it's pretty tough to do it wrong, right? Again, think of your kids, okay? So, sorry, ah, there, ah, it keeps tilting, sorry. Oh, it's all good, I got it, I got it. So think of your kids, okay? If your kids drew you a picture, like little second or third grader, and they drew you a picture and gave it to you, I hope you wouldn't comment on the art, <laughs> right? I hope you wouldn't take the picture and go, okay, this is a bad picture, right? Instead, what you would recognize is what a beautiful effort of love. And you take it, stick it to the fridge, and you brag to your friends. Jesus does the same thing with you. Whatever way you want to pray, whatever way you want to make that connection with God, he treasures it and he sticks it to the fridge and he irritates the angels talking about it, okay? You have to remember, God doesn't tolerate you. Scripture says three distinct times, God delights in you. So don't ever hesitate. St. Augustine put it this way, pray as you are, not as you aren't. Okay? So you offer that beautiful prayer to the Lord and don't worry about doing it right. He can deal. Mostly, he's just treasuring hearing you. Okay? And I know that sounds cheesy, but I don't care I'm right. You don't die for people that you feel mediocre about. Yeah? All right. So, oh, so mediums. So mediums? I don't know. Medium. Uh, medium. Oh, witch? Yes. Like a witch? Yes. She's a witch, bun, huh? Right, what movie was that? They're asking about Life of Brian. Brian. Okay. They're asking about a TV show. Oh, there's a witch who claimed to get messages from the dead. It's called Long Island. Long Island? Like that? Long Island? Yes. There you go. What? See, she knows. Oh, it's my a lady, TV huh? Show. Okay. It's a TV show that so they're saying they're talking to the dead? Yeah, they want Yeah, they're probably not. <laughs> You might be talking to something pretty evil, <laughs> okay? Again, what we want to remember is that that's God's territory and we don't trespass, okay? When the Lord wants to speak to us, he'll speak to us, um, and it'll be lovely, and it'll be life-giving, and it'll be elevating, but when we talk about forcing contact with the dead, I don't think that's the dead talking back. Okay, they're a little focused on the whole heaven experience. Well, can the dead speak to us from heaven? Absolutely, but not by our initiation, right? Keep that in mind. That's a real simple to say, hard to, hard to hold rule. God initiates, we respond. If we try to manipulate reality so that we can make contact, that's not holy. I don't know, does that make sense? This, so. Remember, it's God's invitation, not our machinations that make contact. And will God send messages from heaven for us? I truly believe he will. I truly believe he does. I have been comforted by friends who have gone before me in death, who I've then have felt their words or their presence, but not because I made it happen. Oh, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Oh, wow. Hey, we have an all caps announcement. Um, Joe in black. Oh, it's groovy. All right. It's very pretty and lovely. Uh, Joe in black sweatshirts will be available within the next two weeks, especially in Lansing and South Flint areas. See, there's the shirt. And here's my pretty, pretty head. 
This smells nice. <laughs> this smells good. Yeah? Oh. The no? Beer, the beer will be available. The beer will be available. Yeah. In the Grand Blank. In the Grand Blank area. In Lansing area. Okay. Grand Blank, or what do you call these? Sweatshirts and beer available in the Grand Blank and Lansing area. How cool is that? Am I messing this up? No. Nope. I'm getting a look from Bob. No, no, it was me. Sweatshirts are only here. Sweatshirts only here. Beer everywhere. Beer everywhere in Michigan. Sweatshirts only here. There, we have it. I, it's not just that I'm like unattractive and fat. I'm also not really bright. No, no, no. I, yeah. I, okay. I, I, it was me. But... Okay. Carrie's drunk. <laughs> it's so embarrassing. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So uh, look at the rest of your questions are about the second coming of Jesus, which we're going to cover on Wednesday, unless he comes back Tuesday. <laughs> right? I think we agreed on this. If Jesus comes back Tuesday, I'll see you guys in heaven and we'll talk about what happened. We'll meet at if, the third cloud. Third cloud on the left. Look for the MSU Stadium. Because that is Jesus' favorite school. Yes. It's in the Bible. Don't look it up. So, uh, thank you for tuning in. My gosh, I, I'm so grateful for all of you, for your great questions, and for this time we have together. Next week, on Wednesday, we'll cover second coming and final judgment. On Thursday, do we know who we're going to have? I'm I not telling you. Yes. Are you guys familiar with Michael Jordan? He played basketball for the Bulls. Yeah, he will not be on the show. There you go. Did anyone see Isaiah Thomas? We were just talking about this. Isaiah Thomas from the Detroit Pistons, and I'm old enough to remember and worship that team. Back when in the NBA they played something called defense. <laughs> so who was that who said Jordan wasn't the best player ever? Somebody, we were just talking about this. Huh? Well, Isaiah retweeted it. Like somebody tweeted this whole, Jordan is not the best player ever. And I almost threw down about it. Because LeBron, whatever. He could sure beat me. But Jordan at his peak was God. Small G. Jordan's favorite one, too. He had. Scotty Pippen, the most overrated player in the history of the NBA. Okay. Not fighting. It's in the Bible. Look it up. Okay, so I'm going to shut up now because when I shut up, there's food. Uh, and for any of you who are in this area, at 1.30, we're going to start hocking this beer. I'll be out there for a few minutes to say hello. If any of you need a quick exorcism, I'm doing <laughs> Okay. So thanks for tuning in, guys. Uh, and I will see you on Wednesday. And then next week, we've got a pretty good show lined up. And Friday is live from the construction site. Oh my gosh, Friday, we're going to be at the construction site. I forgot about that. That's going to be smoking. So I look forward to seeing you all. I love you, and that's cute. God loves you, and that's the best news ever. Let's say a prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of your love. Thank you for life. Thank you for the minds you gave us to know. Thank you for the words of your sacred scripture, which guide us and strengthen us. What we ask for now is the grace to live today well. To love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And for all the people we worry about, for all the circumstances that we fret about, we place them in your hands because we love you and we trust you. And may Almighty God bless all of you guys. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. See you guys next week.